Yeah, I saw the button that I could do it, but I wasn't sure if I actually could. Well, I'll do it too, and that way okay. we'll have options. Perfect. Okay, so let's get started. Sitting in our chair of choice, um, option, if you've got an armchair with some arms, that's cool, but we won't make that a, a requirement here. Wherever you are, I want you to sit in your chair, but forget about the back and come to the front. Support your own self. Sit well on your sit bones. Maybe you need to wiggle side to side to find them. Plant your feet in the floor, socks, shoes, or toes, whatever is covering them. Plant them into the floor and bring your palms to the tops of your thighs. Now, we're going to start with our eyes closed, taking a moment to observe our breathing and to tune the outside world out. This may take several minutes, so if you have the opportunity to take a more extended version of this at home, please go ahead, pause the video, and tune into your breathing for as long as you want or as you can afford. So go ahead and close your eyes, allow the gaze to soften, Keeping your hands on the tops of your thighs, let those feel grounded. And breathe in. Exhale. Take another deep breath in. And exhale. This time on your next deep breath in, on the exhalation, see if you can relax the shoulders. Relax the jaw, the space between your eyebrows, your hair, if that's possible. Breathe in, exhale. We're going to take a guided breathing exercise here as an offering to place both hands on your lower belly. And we're going to try and breathe in for three counts and exhale for three counts. And the goal is not to force the breath into this pattern, but to try and guide it into this regular pattern of inhaling and exhaling for the same amount of time. You're welcome to keep your eyes closed or open, whatever makes you comfortable. And with your hands on your belly, fill your belly with air for three counts. One, two, three. Exhale for three. One, two, three. Now keeping this rhythm in your head, take a couple breaths like this. Noticing if you have a tendency to accelerate one or the other. Often we tend to suck all the air in in an inhale and then we slowly exhale it out. See if you can allow the air to come in smoothly and let go of it just as smoothly. Inhale for three. Exhale for three. One more deep breath in. This time, let it be natural and free. Bring your hands back to the tops of your thighs and exhale deeply. Slowly bring your eyes back into the space, allowing your vision to return. And we're going to start with a wrist stretch. And I give this as an offering for anyone that does a lot of computer work or phone work. This is a good counter stretch to all of that action. So bringing the palm of your hand facing forward, fingertips facing the floor, gently keeping the elbow bent, give me a little wrist stretch here. Press the fingers back any amount. As soon as you feel it, that's good. That's a good place to stop right there. Keeping the elbow bent to protect the joint and avoid overextending the elbow. Breathe in here. <sighs> exhale. Oh, doesn't that feel nice? Let's let that go. Give a couple wrist circles with a fist, making a counter motion. 
And let's try the other side and see how it feels. Palm faces forward, fingertips down, gently press, keeping the elbow bent, breathing here. Now you may feel this on your wrist, maybe your forearms, sometimes even your fingers. And you might also notice whether one side feels tighter than the other. And ask yourself, does that happen to be your dominant hand? Exhale, release the fingers, make a small fist, take a couple circles to undo that. Excellent. Now bringing both of our hands, clasping our fingers together, bringing them behind our head, just as if we were at the beach. I know it's a cold, wintry morning already, but let's pretend we were somewhere nice and sunny and warm at the beach. Bring your head into this cradle that you're making with your fingers and make sure your elbows are spread wide to your sides. Avoid this situation. Give your head some space. Now sit up nice and tall here. We're gonna take a motion that is very small, but I hope you'll feel. Bring your head to one side, looking towards your elbow. And just stop here and see if anything has changed in your shoulders, if there's a shoulder that wants to sneak up because this is an odd twist of the neck. And from here, raise your elbow a couple inches, coming into this leaning motion. And look up towards the ceiling. See if you feel the side of your body stretching. Inhale here. Exhale, come back to center and bring your head to center. Now change the clasp of your hands. I know it's a little funny. There's usually one comfortable way and then one a little awkward. So change that. Bring it back behind your head. Sit back like you're at the beach. Turn your head to the side. Look at your elbow. Notice if your shoulder is crept up, let them go back down. And now with your elbow, as if you were tracing a line on the wall up to the ceiling, tilt a couple inches and look at the ceiling. Feel the space between your ribs that you're generating here with this very gentle stretch as we wake our body up. Bring that back down. Head comes back to center. Excellent. Hands come back in front of us. <sighs> Roll your shoulders up and back, and up and back. Last time, up and back. All right, we're gonna come to standing now. Before we do, one last thing. A gentle twist to add to our little chair warm up here. I'm going to place my hand on the outside of the opposite leg. So in my case, we have left arm, right leg. And I'm gonna bring this other hand behind me to the base of the chair. This is a very gentle twist. Now, you may get some snap, crackle, and pops, I like to call them. Oh, that feels so good. Bring out the spine here. Gently using that knee to push yourself into this twist. Don't go too far, just to wake up the spine and look over your shoulder. <sighs> Unravel, and let's take that on the other side. Hand comes to the opposite knee to brace, other hand on the base of the chair, and gently twist and look over your shoulder. Come back to center, and now we're ready to stand up. Plant the feet into the ground, push them away from the floor, and here we are coming to standing. So at this point, we're going to need a wall, and I'm going to go and adjust my space in order to make some space for wall action. You don't need a lot of space on the wall, just enough to the palm of your hand. So come over to the wall. We're gonna plant whichever hand you'd like to start with. Plant the palm into the wall. Now, we're going to measure the height to make sure that we feel this in the right space. You want the hand to be shoulder height. If you do it too low, you won't feel that much. And if you do it too high, you'll feel something different. So look for your palm of your hand at the height of your shoulder and press that palm into the wall. Now, notice if your fingers are curling up, press all five fingers into the wall as if you had suction cups below them. Mm. Now with that pressing action, notice if you can also engage the base of the hand of the palm. Ah, yes, 
Another thing to look for here is whether you come forwards or back. Really try and keep your shoulder aligned with your torso here as the hand presses into the wall. Now use this opportunity to plant your feet into the ground and stand up nice and straight. We come away from our chair, which means now we have to hold ourselves up with pride, of course. As you press into the hand, take a couple steps away from that arm, rotating the torso and the whole body. Stop right here. Notice, have you felt anything different in the front of that shoulder, perhaps the arm and forearm? That's good. Now, can you take a couple more steps, teeny tiny steps away from that shoulder? Continue to press through all five fingers and through the palm. Inhale, exhale. Some people find that this generates strong sensations. I don't know if that's the case for you, but I'm feeling this. Inhale, exhale. You might even feel some tingles just sort of shooting down the arm. Inhale, one more breath here. <sighs> Exhale, walk the feet back towards the arm. Release the hand. Oh yes, some tingles. Take a couple counter circles with the wrist and the fist. Excellent. Now we're gonna release that arm down, taking this opportunity for a good quad stretch, which is an excellent thing to do if you sit a lot. Grab whichever uh, foot is away from the wall, so in my case, it's my right leg, and bring your foot towards your booty. If possible, grab the top of your foot and slowly pull the foot towards your buttocks. Inhale, exhale. Keeping the knees together here and a straight spine. Inhale, exhale. Release the foot. Now we're gonna come into a balanced position to see where we're at today and wherever you are, it's okay. Just observe what's going to happen next. This is not a huge acrobatic challenge, but it may challenge you on a mental level even more. So keeping the fingertips on the wall. I might do just one finger, but you're welcome to do your whole hand if you need extra support. The wall is our safety net. You're going to pick up your opposite leg to the wall and hold the front of your shin, not the knee itself, but just below. Bringing that knee up here. If you wanna go ahead and test your balance, you may already let go of the wall and bring both hands to the front of the shin here. Finding your balance, bringing the knee up closer to the chest. You might take a few pulses here if it feels very far away and you wanna warm up the hip joint and the knee. Breathing in here, exhale. Pressing into the standing leg, which is providing our stability at this point. So here's the challenge for balance. Hopefully you're still up on that leg. You may keep your finger on the wall if that helps. We're going to release this arm. Yep, that's right. So I'm gonna bring both hands back to my knee. I'm gonna let go of this one and opening up into a twist away from my leg. And here's the trick to this. Don't look down. Try and look about arm height and see how far you go before you all fall down. Oh, I'm going to look all the way back behind me to my thumb. I'm going to close that arm like I close a book. Re-grab the front of my shin, lower the leg down, <laughs> and shake it out. Oh, boy. So sometimes when we change our gaze in a balance, it throws the whole situation uh, off. So we're going to try that again. Now you know where we're going. With that twist, see if you can track your fingers as you open up. And you can open any amount. You can look completely behind you or you just open 20 degrees and notice how much that changes for you. The goal here is to shift what we're looking at and to work on some balance. So come back, fingertips to the wall, grab the top of your shin, stay right here. If you want, you can just try the balance right here. This might be enough for you today. Otherwise, open up that arm coming into a twist, radiate, maybe comfort? I'm not sure, is this comfortable? Probably not. <laughs> but just remember, it's just for fun, so there's no pressure here. If you fall over, close the book. 
Bring one last knee up, a oh, little squeeze here. Release that and I'll pedal the feet out right and left. Maybe move your hips side to side if you start to feel a lot of action in the standing weight. We're gonna take all of that arm and leg action on the other side now. Bring in your other hand, planting the palm in the wall, spreading the fingers wide, push into the wall, making sure the hand is shoulder height. And whenever you're set up, take a few steps, maybe just three inches away from your arm, feeling the opening in the top front of the shoulder. Maybe you can feel this in the armpit. I can feel it in my arm and forearm and definitely the base of my wrist. I'm gonna keep pressing into the wall as I stand up nice and straight. Maybe take a couple more steps, rotating the torso, opening up, and checking in with the breathing, making sure it's still there. One more deep breath here. Excellent. Stepping the feet back, releasing the hand. Give me a couple counter circles here with the fist. Ah, yes, that feels very nice on my wrist joint. Hopefully it does for you too. Now bringing the finger to the wall, pick up your foot, give me a quad stretch, pulling the heel towards the butt, standing up nice and straight, squeeze the thighs together here. Notice if you squeeze the butt together, if that changes the sensation in your legs. Probably you'll feel a different pull in the quad. Release the foot. Now bring the knee up to 90 degrees, grab the top of the shin, find your balance here, pressing the floor away, staying up straight. If you are able, grab the knee with both hands, open up the arm, and come into that twist. Now, hey, for this first round, I'm gonna stay right here. I'm gonna choose to look straight at you and see if I can balance like this. Keeping that leg up is going to help you, otherwise it might pull you down, but wow. Notice that you have to engage the abdominals to keep this shape. Focus on your hand and fingertips as they reach away from your torso and maybe, maybe open a little bit more. Keeping the gaze looking along your fingertips. Close the arm like you close a book. Release the leg. Ah, march it out. We're gonna try that one more time. This time, you know where we're going. Maybe try and uh, open up the twist a little bit more. Maybe not. Maybe you're just well, working on balancing that one leg and that's fine. Bring the knee up. Both hands to the top of the shin. Open up. Try something new. Breathe here. Exhale, close the arm. Lower the leg down. Little walk side to side. Shimmy, how did we do? Nobody fell over. At least I can't see, so I assume everybody's still standing. We're going to now use either the wall or the back of your chair to come into a modified downward dog. This is a good stretch for the back and for the backs of the legs. So I'm gonna use the back of my chair, which is actually more accessible and sturdy. Bringing your hands here, walking the feet back, reaching the sit bones behind you, in my case, straight into my TV, hello. Go ahead and take a minute here, keeping the feet hip width apart, hands shoulder width apart, reach the sit bones back and the head between the arms. Inhale, and we're gonna be here for five breaths on your own time. If you'd like, you can pedal the feet right and left, and you'll definitely feel this in the backs of your legs. If the hamstrings are tight, you're welcome to keep both knees bent, but the ideal situation is that you reach your hips back so that the spine can elongate. Now it might feel good to drop the head below, but you really wanna keep the ears in line with the upper arms so that we keep a long straight spine here. Now when you're done with your breaths, we're going to bend the knees deeply and release the hands, 
coming down to the floor. And the head will nod yes and shake no. If the floor is very far away for you, go ahead and bend the knees deeper and you'll see that it comes up to you somehow. From here, we're gonna roll up the spine, keeping the knees bent, coming up very slowly, feeling the vertebrae unravel, standing up straight. This is going to be our mountain pose. Feet are hip width apart, palms face forward, eyes can close here. And go ahead and check in with your breathing. Excellent. We're now going to use our chair and step on it. So make sure that if you have shoes, you may need to take them off depending on your shoes and your chair. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna rotate. And now I'm going to go ahead and pick up my foot placing the foot on the chair. And either if you've got arms on your chair, you can use those. Otherwise, reach the fingertips towards the base of the chair and scoot your foot back. This is going to be our lunge opportunity here. Now you can rock forwards and back a little, warming up the hip, allowing this hip to stretch as much as you feel the crease in this one. And really pressing the foot into the chair, making sure that you are stable and safe as you do this. And you may need to scoot around until you find the right alignment. At some point, come into stillness as you stay in this lunge. Press the torso up by pressing on the top of the thigh and feel the opening of this hip flexor right here. We're gonna breathe here for five breaths, reaching the torso up, elongating the spine. This my friends, is a good stretch for people who sit in chairs. As you'll notice with this leg, I have a 90 degree flexion here going on between my hip and my torso, which means my hip flexor stays in that position all day. This will help counter all of that, opening this up, and it might feel very tight for you. And this is a good place to just breathe and relax. Excellent. Now you scoot this leg in a couple, inches here either using arms of your armchair or fingers to the top of your seat. Straighten the other leg and now of course I say straighten we're not all super bendy so any amount is good if you want to stop where you start to feel the pull here that's a good place to be. Now the torso is reaching forwards and I'm trying to keep a straight back. The abs are in. This is quite an active stretch. Don't let it fool you. There's no rounding of the spine. I'm stretching my back as I'm stretching the back of my legs. Now for those of us that are super bendy and want more, if you want more sensation, straighten that leg. Curl the toes up, flex the leg. Now you're going to activate your calf as well as your hamstring. Hello. Breathing in here. Exhale, repoint the foot if you had flexed it, bend the leg, come back up, and go ahead and take that foot off the chair. Ah, give me a little pedal side to side. Okay, we're gonna take that on the other side. Other foot comes up, plant the base of the foot into the chair, push yourself up on the top of your thigh, reach both heels into whatever surface they're on, and breathe. Feel the opening across the other hip. Notice if there's any difference in tightness or looseness between each hip. You can take a couple rocks forwards and back. Adjust your back foot as needed until you find that balance here. Excellent, come back here, reach either to the arms of your chair or the base of your chair, shift the hips back, straighten the leg and you mount. Breathing in, exhale. Some of us feel a little shakes when we start to pull on a muscle and that's a, that's a sign that your body is telling you to back off because this is an unusual sensation. When you reach that point though, I encourage you to just pause and notice that your body might go into an alarm state 
from wherever you are. You just need to breathe and calm it down. Allow your muscle to soften and accept the new sensation. Flex the foot if you want more. Ha! Ah. Rebend that foot. Push it away. Oh, hello. Last time standing before we come on down to take our final sit on our chairs. This time, same thing. Find your sit bones. Forget about the back of your chair. Sit up nice and tall here. We're going to take a hip stretch, crossing our leg, flex the foot, place it on top of the opposite thigh. Flex the foot to protect the knee joint. This is a big hip stretch. But if you want more, you're welcome to lean the torso forwards and I guarantee you, you'll feel it in this hip right here. Now, we're going to also add a shoulder stretch here, making sure that we sit up nice and straight. Bring your hands into a goal post position, close them, cross the forearms, and this might be enough for you, but if you can, bring the backs of the hands together. <gasps> Do you feel that across your shoulders? in your shoulder blades perhaps. And wherever you are, make sure you bring the elbows up. Down here is probably more comfortable. Bring it up here and press the arms together. Squeeze, <sighs> breathe here. <sighs> Unravel those, uncross the legs, switch sides. Flex the foot, bring the knee down. Sometimes we need to ah, give it a little assistance. Now cross your other arm on top, whichever one that was. This one. Bring the backs of the palms together. Inhale, exhale. Almost done. Release that. Uncross the leg. Plant both feet into the floor. One last challenge before we wind down and come back to our breathing. I'm gonna bring the hands to hover above my knees and just tap my knee to my hand. Little marching here. Do you realize what action I'm triggering? Oh my goodness, yes, these are seated abdominals. Now, take a few like this, let's say 10. If you want more because you're like, oh, yes, I love doing abdominal work in the middle of the day at work, you can use the base of your seat and bring both knees up at once, pushing the floor away, with pointed toes. Oh, just five more, five, four, three, two, one, last one, hold. Ah. Excellent. Whatever you decide, bring your feet back down. Check in, see if anything's still shaking, hopefully not. Bring your sit bones to the edge of your seat. Now we're gonna put one hand in the other, palms facing up, usually your dominant hand resting in the other one. Bringing our hands into our lap. And as we close our eyes, taking these next few minutes to check in with our breathing, we're gonna come back to that pattern of threes. Inhaling for three and exhaling for three. And I'm not going to guide you, I'm going to let you try it on your own. But if it feels comfortable and natural, see if you could extend that into four. Inhaling for four and exhaling for four essentially slowing the breath down even further, relaxing into this pattern, which is really there just to try and even out the inhale and exhale. To try it on your own, counting in your head, and we'll meet in five breaths. Make your last breath the deepest one yet. And since you're in the privacy of your home or office, allow that exhale to become a sigh of relief because we are done. <sighs> if that sigh was a little timid, go ahead and sigh it out this next time even louder and more exaggerated. 
<sighs> oh, oh, yes. I know it feels a little silly, but it does feel good because it helps us relax. So thank you all for joining me today. I'm so glad you took 30 minutes to take time for yourself to move around. I really encourage you to do that at any point during the week or weekend if you've got even 20 minutes to step away from your screen or step away from your chair and find a wall, then chances are that you can do this again. I am so glad to have had you and I will be around again in November. I will teach a yoga flow class and that class will be utilizing a mat and we'll be getting down on the floor and we will be continuously moving, generating some heat and momentum through our poses and also in the 30 minute format. Of course, you can wear your wildest leggings. I won't judge, I'll, I'll do the same. And if you wanna take an in-person class in Bowling Green, you're welcome to come and join us for Group X classes at Falcon Fitness at the Rec Center. I teach a Saturday morning yoga class at 11.15. It's 45 minutes long. All levels are welcome. The only prop you need is a mat or blanket or towel. And I also teach a class that's free online called Move For Your Mood. If you look up Falcon Fitness on Instagram, Every Friday from 12 to 12.30, it's a strength training for beginners. And it's also an excellent way to just incorporate 30 minutes of movement into your daily routine. And you can watch the recorded videos for free as well. So you don't have to necessarily sacrifice your lunchtime on Fridays. On that note, thank you for joining me. If you are here live, this is totally time for lunch, which I've been thinking about the whole time. And I would love to see you again soon in November. Bye, everyone.